a few things. I got some slides here. Um, got this right here. Uh, but before I do that, uh, help grow my channel. Like, subscribe, share. I've been doing this for a while and uh, it's hard to break out. Um, on a side note, I'm looking to build a web bot uh, that uh, it's, it's an extension. Um, it's, a, it's, it's web assembly, basically. Um, it's a, it's a YouTube viewer uh, viewer bot, so you know, going into full scale war with uh, YouTube. Um, I'm gonna build the bot and then put it and then have it uh, give me more views, just so I can kind of get higher up on the uh, the view list or whatever. Um, YouTube's completely taken over. It's uh, it's probably not what you think it is. It's all controlled. Um, I know that it, it, my YouTube channel is a prime example of that. I've over, I put over 300 videos, and um, um, you know I've had various types of formats from a minute to two hours, using all various uh, keywords, and um, you know it doesn't. Uh, I, I I can barely crack. I don't get any views really. Um, so it's just completely, all my videos are completely put in a cellar, not even reviewed whatsoever. Um, but then you have certain channels that come out with like five videos and are already cracking, um, thousands and thousands of views. So, but I mean, there's a lot of ways. I mean, you could pay for views. You could, uh, I mean, that's, you know, payola or whatever. Um, there's other there's other ways search engine optimization you know they probably have a, a website you know and um, with their videos attached to their website and you know when people search it on Google or any type of search you know it, it that gets in to a whole other field you know putting um, a certain type of a, a meta a meta tag in your HTML file all this and that so anyway I'm, I'm looking to build a bot. A, a YouTube view bot, and not even that, a social media bot. Now there is ways that they do to have to defend that. Um, there is, you know, ways to catch all that. But anyway, so now this. Okay, last episode I recommended two two types of um, material to check out. One was from uh, deciphering my experience. Um, he, this guy, basically copied and pasted the front page. And then added his own little spin. Um, this is complete garbage. This is the type of stuff that ruins the um, alien, the the ufology or whatever. Now I just got into it, so I'm completely fresh eyes, fresh looking at this whole subject. I'm looking at it basically from a an objective point of view. But reading a lot of these claims, it's just complete fake. Um, none of this can be proven. Like okay, I, I read I read the first like article right this part right here and then I actually verified as I was going I would verify all the claims and it was comp from what I got from the internet anyway was completely uh, bullshit like this Orion cons consortium completely not it's there is something that there is an Orion consortium but it's not what he's claiming I'll just read it to you 
On February 20, 1954, President Eisenhower met with a delegation of ETs called the Orion Consortium. Now, there is an Orion Consortium, but it's not that. <laughs> uh, Edwards Air Force Base, also known as Murick Air Force Base, which is Army Air Force Base. I saw I looked up that. I don't know why he threw it, that in there, because before Edwards became Edwards Air Force Base, it was Murick Army Air Force Base. Uh, to carve out a mutual beneficial treaty in exchange for highly advanced technology, the Granada Treaty. So I looked at Granada Treaty, completely out of, it has nothing to do with this. A Granada Treaty had something to do with the treaty in Granada, some kind of something. But it had nothing to do with what he's talking about. So he's throwing in these terms. None of this can be proven, like the grays and, and all this. Those, none of that's proven. Like, you can't prove any of that. It's just made up. Like, where are they getting this stuff from? Uh, basically from eyewitness testimony. So basically people who claim that they've seen all these things. Now, I'm not a debunker. Like, I mean, obviously, I do believe that there's most likely intelligent extraterrestrial life out there. And, um, you know, um, given enough time, they could probably... Uh, invent the technology to, to travel the, the extremely long distances. The biggest thing is not really the distance, really. It's probably the, it's solving the time dilation. Um, so obviously, the only way to do that is a warp bubble because sp the fabric of space-time, you're not, it's not moving. Uh, you're, you're, you're staying stationary, which means time's st st um, staying stationary. But once you move at a certain rate, of speed, then time slows down and all that. So you can't get past that. So this is completely garbage. Don't even, I, I, I'm sorry I even recommended this because I didn't have a chance to read it. It looked cool. But I told you last episode that I would de uh, dig deep into it. So just totally disregard that. <clears throat> the other piece of uh, information um, I shared with you was... Um, They find it was this the declaration of principles concerning uh, activities following the detection of extraterrestrial intelligence so this this is um, this was set up by uh, SETI um, which is this group here um, IAA SETI permanent committee um, interesting just to check that out but this was drafted in 1989 right so <clears throat> They, they, um, you know, I, you know, I, as you know, I'm, I'm developing a counter report, um, to this whole, uh, to, to that, to that, um, the report that was re just released to the public, um, because we're going to just, um, we're going to take control of the narrative ourselves. Um, you know, I'm on the fence or I consider myself on the fence. I don't consider myself, um, just like, like a pure debunker or whatever, um, no, I'm actually 100% generally, uh, fascinated and curious and, and want the, um, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to discovery, you know, if, if it is, but I'm also extremely suspicious and cautious about, um, any type of entities intentions. Um, I never really take any type of, uh, their, their narrative on face value. Um, I mean, and nor, I don't believe you should, uh, not an institution. I mean, you can't compare how your behavior on how you would act with family or your friends as the same type of behavior that you would, you would, um, uh, um, give to like an institution, um, uh, institutions or corporations or, or government entities, they have their own, um, identity, uh, identity or, um, you know, uh, intentions. And it's not similar. Like, you, you know, when you, when you're dealing with family, you know, like, okay, fine. Treat them with that type of behavior. Like, oh, I believe you face value because I love you. And, and I know that your intentions are good or whatever. That's all fine and dandy or however you want to act. But when it comes to entities like institutions and stuff, no, you should not have that type of attitude. So if there's certain shows out there that are they, like I said, there's two camps. There's one camp that is totally for 
you know, this, they think it's great, it's good, this is the first step that, you know, we should, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then there's the other camp that's really suspicious and skeptical and say that this is some kind of, you know, hidden narrative behind this. And I, I uh, think of myself as right in the middle. Um, one good thing is that uh, my YouTube channel and all that doesn't make any money. Like, I don't have any money. I, and the only reason that I would want to make money is so that I can do it on a full-time basis. I go to school and I go to uh, work. So I'm very busy. And on top of that, I'm doing stuff like this, right? So, yeah, I would like to make money um, so I could do it full-time, like getting sponsors. I'd love, I could be so much more effective if I could do this full-time, you know. But I can, I can do this barely even part-time. Um, but the good thing is, is when you don't make money, that you're untouchable, okay? Nobody can say that, you know, I have some kind of a, a agenda or whatever. So this is, take it how you want. If you don't like what I'm saying, then just turn the channel. Um, but anyway, so, okay, so you need to analyze their behavior. Like, from the camp that's pro, like this, like pro-discovery or pro-government controlling the narrative or whatever, um, in control is pro like yeah let's set up a a, a department um, you got to analyze their behavior and why that they're so critical of the other camp you know at least to skip you know and 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 of course you need to analyze the the behavior of the skeptical camp and then how they attack each other which is good for me because I can I can say on the outside analyze both of their behaviors um, anyway. The group that wrote this up is called SETI. Now, I think we should br bring SETI into the conversation. They've been doing this since the 60s. Um, but anyway, my report had... Um, a, 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 if, if we can just jump to, jump to them and say, hey, what is your procedure for that if, you know, aliens do make contact, right? Um, because obviously, they're, you know... Within the report, they're claiming that there's there's creatures doing all kinds of stuff. Well, you better come up with a, some kind of procedures so if we do contact them, right? Um, all right, so. Nine Nations, Office for Outer Space Affairs. Treaty on principles governing the activities of states in the exploration of use of, of outer space, including the moon and other terrestrial bodies. Um, okay, so there, the United Nations has an office for, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. I uh, ran into this. God, look at all these ads. The Ten laws, rules for, uh, regulations for extraterrestrial contact. Ten. Astronauts must be quarantined in case of alien hitchhikers. Obviously, that's like microbes and bacteria and stuff like that. Uh, number nine, alien life must be reported to the UN immediately. Number eight, rules for initial contact with extraterrestrials. Seven, maritime, maritime law for space colonizing. According to the UN's Outer Space Treaty, no human or nation can own a part or a whole of any planet uh, as they are the province of all mankind. Um, so they've already been through all of this before. So before we just, you know, this is 2021, and before we just create a whole new narrative, right, and forget of everything in the past, and, you know, because this is kind of inconvenient, isn't it, to revisit the past, you got to analyze your behavior. Analyze the behavior of, the, okay, let's call it let's call it the left and right camp. The right camp has is is the debunkers like, like your Mick West and your and your um and your uh your, your Stephen Greer. Your left camp would be your TTSA, um your unidentified, I forgot their name. And, and see my my personal. Uh, my policy for my YouTube channel is that I don't investigate any other uh, alternative media channels. So I know that's a big thing, like, where they say, oh, this guy's a shill, this guy's, you know, this guy's this, this guy's that. 
like uh, Will Cock or uh, Emery, uh, what's his name? Emery, Emery Smith. Like those guys are completely 100% fake. I don't like to do that. It's just not my thing, okay? But for the sake of argument, we'll call these two, these two camps. Like you have your left camp, which is your TTSA, your Lou Elizondo, and then your right camp, which would be like your Stephen Greer. Your Stephen Greer. You have to analyze the behavior of left camp. If you start bringing up this stuff here and left camp is not cool with it, you got to ask yourself why. It's like, well, okay, well, we already have all this information here. I don't mind revising it in a 2021 uh, format, but if you're if you're trying to, to rewrite all this, right, you got to ask yourself why. Um, now, nobody should be like, I'm not paying a, a negative, I'm not trying to put a negative spin on both camps. I actually like both camps. I think it's, it's kind of interesting. But um, I'm in a camp of the center. Okay, there's that UNOOSA. Okay, so United Nations to appoint official to first contact with. Okay, I don't know how I got there. Um, here's another interesting thing I ran, I ran through called U.S. Department of State. Um, Office of Space Affairs about us. So, <laughs> the primary goal of OES is to advance American space leadership by pursuing and maintaining a rules-based international framework for a long-term uh, sustainable communi communication, commercialized and utilization of space. Okay, so it's the State Department. That's your that's your international agreements and diplomacy. Your ambassadors. Um, that's also the, the biggest um, source for espionage, uh, over espionage, not 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 covert. So it's it's understood that hey, it, it's not bad. You're just like, well, hey, I just want to get a an idea of what's going on in your country with my eyes on, you know, get a ground feel. Everybody kind of understands that. Um, United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. This is their website. That's that right there so there's here now I don't I'm not a big UN believer I mean um, I'm pro US I, I think we should just cut these fools I don't even like the UN um, I think that I don't, I don't want a world government uh, the main reason is because it's totalitarian and it's an unelected government that's not based on the US con it's not based on the, the first 10 uh, amendments of the Constitution also known as the Bill of Rights that's the biggest thing um, Outer Space Treaty of 1967. So here, you know, I don't even know if this is in place. Um, we do know this. The posture of the U.S. is that wants, I guess, wants to go get space militarized or whatever. <clears throat> um, uh, now, there's, there is some things about putting things on the moon and stuff. So you can't do that. Um. Am I for the militarization of space? I'm yes and no. I mean, we're kind of on the fence with that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So what we're going to do is is we're drafting a... We're taking... Okay. We're taking this, right? Which is written in 1989. And we're updating it. So we're writing it like... And adding a 2021 and... A, a, cause, cause this just involved signals like radio communication, basically from like, a, you know, like if they got a signal from outer space or something. So the area we highlight here is the areas that we've changed it up. So this will go into our counter report. Uh, we'll, we'll draft this counter report. It'll probably take a year um, at this rate, um, but we're, we're not giving up. Uh, we're sticking to it. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get the report all, all up and nice and neat, and then we'll go ahead and email it to every congressman on the state and federal level. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, um, y'all have a good rest of the week, and I'll see you later. Right ascension, 18 hours, 36 minutes, 56.2 seconds. Hey, is anybody awake in there? I'm moving the array. Confirm. 
Boss has a bogey. Right of action, 18 what? hours, 36 huh? minutes, 56.2 seconds. Fish. Declination. We're on it. Boss 